Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. So glad to hear uh, the people on the line tonight um, for our Tuesday night hour of power. We are so excited tonight to have everybody here. I tell you, I was so excited about what God has been downloading this week that I was ready to give this lesson about 530, <laughs> about three hours earlier. But I tell you, that's how God does. He excites you about um, the things of him and his word. And I hope that everybody is having a good start of the week um, as we get closer to our Thanksgiving holidays on next week. So we hope that everybody is having a good start of the week and that everybody is excited about the holiday season, regardless of what's going on in the world right now. We have to find our times to be excited, to be happy, to laugh and to enjoy one another. So we're just excited tonight. Tonight is a new series alert. A new series alert, new series alert. We're here and God has downloaded another series. As you know, um, throughout the broadcast, we have had several series throughout uh, this broadcast. And I tell you, God is just continue, continuing to grow us and to establish us in his word. And I'm just so excited tonight. We're going to be talking about uh, a great subject, some great subject matter. If you have some friends, you have some family, um, they don't want to miss this. I don't think that they want to miss this. This is going to be um, very life-changing, what I feel, not only for the unbelievers, but definitely for the believers. This word, this series word is going to be a word for the believers. It's going to enhance you. It's going to grow you. And, uh, not only in your spiritual life, but also in your secular endeavors, as far as your business, uh, your government ideas, your books that you're planning on writing. Uh, we're getting ready to go to another level, and I pray that this will be a huge blessing for you as God is downloading it to me. Hallelujah. So let's wait no further. Let's get into the Word of God. Hallelujah. We're going to be going um, for the uh, foundation scripture for our series. Our series scripture is going to come from Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And then we're also uh, for, you know, hopefully we can get to the scripture tonight, the storyline. We're going to be going to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12. So we're going to start with Romans Chapter four, that's going to be our series scripture, as long as God gives that to us. And we're also going to have a storyline coming from uh, Genesis chapter 12. So Romans chapter four in the New Testament and Genesis chapter 12 in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're starting here in Romans chapter four. And the Apostle Paul writes this particular letter to the Roman church. He had never been to this church before. This is not a church that he has established. This is a church that has been established by other believers whom most theologians believe were a part of the day of Pentecost and actually migrated from Jerusalem at the time of Pentecost back to their home city of Rome. Some say that uh, when Claudius, the emperor at the time, kicked out a lot of the Jewish people, um, when they migrated back home, these Jewish people who had been converted to Jesus Christ actually went back home and started a church in Rome. So Paul is writing to this church he had never been to, this church that was uh, a part of the body of Christ now, made up of Jewish and Greek people. So he's writing a letter to them to tell them how to move forward in this salvation that they now have by Jesus Christ. What we must remember is the gospels is the gospel obtained. This is where Jesus come. He walks the earth and we obtain the gospel through him. Then as we get to the book of Acts, the book of Acts is the gospel proclaimed where the believers begin to go out into the whole world and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
and begin to draw people to Jesus Christ and many become saved and many become delivered and many become followers in this Christian walk with Jesus. But then we go from the gospel proclaimed to the book of Romans, which most theologians say this is the gospel explained. So we got the gospel obtained, the gospel proclaimed, and now we are going to the gospel explained. And we want to go here to around verse 20 of chapter 4. Verse 20. And the Bible says, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. He never wavered. When God told him something, he stood on it. He stood firm on it. And he believed God at his word. The Bible says, in fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. So Abraham, regardless of what he goes through in life, one thing that stays sufficient, one thing that he maintains is his belief and his faith in God's word. It brought glory to God to see Abraham grow in faith. That when God told him something, regardless of the circumstances that surrounded his life, Abraham stood on the word of God. He never wavered. Verse 21 says, he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Abraham was fully convinced. He fully understood that whatever God says, that it's going to come to pass. Verse 22 says, and because of Abraham's faith, listen to this, because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. Because of Abraham's faith in God and his word, God counted him righteous. Now, this is interesting because most believers, even in today's time, I don't think they understand the spiritual construct of what God has placed on the body of believers. I don't think they understand it because we still live in a time where people feel like is however they work or whatever deeds that they accomplish, that this somehow helps them be saved. They somehow feel that if I can do this, if I can do enough of good deeds, if I can do enough going to church, if I can do enough laying hands on people or giving money or feeding the homeless or doing all of these good deeds, which are good, which are good, they feel like that this somehow makes them saved. This is not the construct spiritually that God has given us. So let's, let's start a little bit back to the beginning. I want y'all to stay with me tonight. Let's start a little bit here because sometimes we need a review. In the beginning, the worlds, the worlds, heaven's dimension and earth's dimension were together. They were together Hallelujah. living in peace and harmony. Adam living with God. Eve, living with Adam, who lives with God. And they meet in the cool of the day, every day, for fellowship and worship. Adam being created in the image and likeness of God, hallelujah, lives in a land where he is able to fellowship with God Almighty. They are able to see each other face to face. There's no relationship established anywhere like Adam's and God's. Hallelujah. And he creates Eve, this, this woman he gives Adam out of his rib. He creates her to be with man from a physical standpoint in order to accomplish dominion on the earth. Hallelujah. For God has given them the earth 
to have dominion on it. And this earth that Adam and Eve live in are part of the dimension of heaven. Glory to God. Because they are together. They are united. God and his man. God and his man and his man's woman. But you know the story. They go from a united front to where Satan comes in and fools Eve into eating fruit that God had forbid Adam and Eve to eat. They go from united to now separated. Glory to God. Now heaven separates from the earth. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Hallelujah. And the earth and heaven are now separated because of man's sin. Therefore, Adam and Eve have to leave the presence of God, which is called the Garden of Eden, and never to come back into that presence again because now they have been tainted by sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So fast forward down to Moses. Hallelujah. Now I'm, I'm going to get back to, to where we're going tonight, but I want us to fast forward here to Moses. Moses and God establish a way for him to have fellowship with man again. Hallelujah. So Moses establishes and builds him and the Levite Levitical priesthood. They build a tabernacle for God. And in this tabernacle, they have a center in the tabernacle called the Holies of Holies, where God is able to come and commune with his people again in this tabernacle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But man still can't fully have fellowship and have uh, peace with God because he still is tainted with sin. So the plan comes that when God comes in this temple, there must be a sacrifice of an animal, an unblemished animal that must be sacrificed. And what this animal does is when they kill this animal, this animal spiritually is able to absorb the sins of the people. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God is meeting with them in this tabernacle and this animal that is slain is now absorbing the sins of the people, which causes them now to be able to have fellowship with God. And this goes on from the tabernacle to Solomon's time when Solomon builds a temple, hallelujah, which takes the place of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. So now God is bringing his presence from the tabernacle to the temple. Hallelujah. And the act of killing innocent goats, innocent sheep, hallelujah, is still in effect to absorb and take away the sins of the people. Now we fast forward to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now we're doing away. God's plan is to do away with the temple like he did the tabernacle because he has found another temple to live in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this temple that he lives in now is called Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He lives in an innocent body where sin has no, hallelujah, dominion. Sin has never even touched this body. Hallelujah. And this temple, Jesus Christ, however, is able to go in different places within his vicinity and carry the kingdom of God. But there's still a problem. There's still nobody to take away the sins of man. Hallelujah. There's still nobody to take away the sins of the woman. So John the Baptist makes the proclamation, behold the lamb, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Behold the lamb that has come to take away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. When he saw Jesus coming over the horizon, he made a proclamation and an announcement that God is inside of this body. God is inside of this temple. 
Now behold the lamb who is getting ready to be sacrificed for the sins of the world. Glory to God. So Jesus dies. They put him on the cross and they kill him. Hallelujah. And through this death, he goes into hell. Hallelujah. For three days. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Proclaiming the gospel even to the Old Testament saints. Hallelujah. And on the third day, rising again with all power in his hand now. And what does he have the power to do? He has the power of the kingdom. He has power over all dominion. And guess what? He has the power to take away your sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now this temple, hallelujah, that God lives in has now died Hallelujah, to take away your sins. So Jesus took it all. He was the temple and the lamb. Hallelujah. And he took away the sins of the world. So now when Jesus rose again and took away your sin, now everyone who accepts Jesus Christ by confessing that Jesus is Lord God and believes he died and rose again is now immediately washed clean of all of their sins. They are what the church called saved. Hallelujah. They are cleansed now. The minute that you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, he's telling the Jewish people, he's telling the people of every other religion, you don't have to now continue to sacrifice lambs. You don't even have to wait or travel to meet me in the temple, that wherever you accept me, I come into your life, and you have now been cleansed from sin. Glory to God. And now that you have been cleansed from sin, we can now have fellowship again. For what the first Adam could not do, Jesus came to reestablish your covenant relationship with God Hallelujah. By taking away your sins and by living inside of your body. Mm. So the body now, the temple now, oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me here. The temple now, once you accept Jesus and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the temple has changed again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we who accept Jesus and are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have now become the temple for God to live in. Hallelujah. And he says, know ye not that your temple is the body that houses the Holy Spirit? Glory to God. You are now the temple that house the presence of God. Glory to God. And you don't have to worry about the damage of sin anymore because Jesus' sacrifice on the cross absorbed all of your sins. I wish I had somebody up here tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's nothing you can add to it. There's nothing that you could try to do to make yourself more saved. There's nothing that you can pay for. Hallelujah. I don't care how much money you give to the poor. I don't care how much money you give to the church. I don't care how many homeless people you feed. I don't care how many times you go to church during the week. I don't care if you've laid down every sin and I don't care if you've isolated yourself and become a monk or a nun or a priest. It doesn't matter because the only way that you can be saved is by believing in Jesus Christ. It is through your very faith and trust in Jesus Christ that you are made righteous in his sight. Hallelujah. I love the way the Apostle Paul begins to say it here in the verse, chapter 4. He says, your father Abraham was the first man to do this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What made him righteous was the way that he believed God. The way that he trusted God. The way that he was unwavering in the promises of God. Hallelujah. That is a problem with the church. Let me pause here and work this kink out because I still hear people that are relying 
on their works. You can hear it in their prayers. You can hear it in their conversations. They're still crying out, Lord, I hope I'm doing the right thing to please you. Lord, I hope that I'm saying the right thing. Lord, I hope that I'm going the right places. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's all of their hope in what they're doing. Hallelujah. That is not God's intention. Oh, help me to preach this tonight. Because he says in Ephesians chapter 2, he says, he says, your works cannot save you. For you're saved by grace through faith. And we established a few months ago that grace, the definition of that is simply God is giving you something good that you did not deserve. This was his plan from the beginning was to give you something good that you did not deserve. See, it wasn't about how good you look. It wasn't about anything about you. It was all about how good that God is. Hallelujah. I know you want to rely on your works. I know you want to say how good you've been. And some of y'all have the nerve and the audacity to, to, to talk down on people because they have committed certain sins that maybe you did not commit. Hallelujah. And you like to overrate sins and minimize sins. But I love the way the Apostle Paul puts it in uh, Romans chapter 3 when he says, all have come short. Hallelujah. All have sinned and come short of the glory, the standard of God. Everybody, everybody has sinned and come short of the glorious standard of God. Whether you're Jew, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Puerto Rican, whether you're any ethnicity, we all have come short of the glorious standard of God. Oh, but we have a lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have a lamb that was slain on the cross for our sin. Hallelujah. And this is what I want to announce tonight to the people. Hallelujah. Is that this lamb that was slain this blood that he shed, it never loses its power. If you go back, hallelujah, on the Day of Atonement, which they had on an annual basis, they had to sacrifice a lamb every year for the sins of the people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But this lamb, Jesus Christ, only had to be slain one time. Hallelujah. And that lamb that blood, it never loses its power. This blood that Jesus shed, this blood that was shed on Calvary, it never, I don't care what sin you've committed. <laughs> hallelujah. There's no sin that's too big, hallelujah, to wipe out with the blood. There's, there, there's no sin that's too small that the blood can't find. Hallelujah. This blood that was shed on Calvary has enough power to cleanse you, watch this, if you only believe it. So this brings me to the subject tonight, hallelujah. This is going to be the serious subject, winner's faith, hallelujah. Winner's faith. We're going to develop winner's faith, hallelujah. We're going to get you excited again. Hallelujah. I know there's a lot of things going on in the world that, that are here to try to take away your excitement and try to take away your happiness and your joy. But this winner's faith, hallelujah, that Abraham showed us and he developed, he was unwavering in the word and the promises of God. That is where the enemy desires to get the believer again where he does not trust the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, where he begins to try to help himself, where he begins to rely on his own works, hallelujah, to get him to the place that he feels like he needs to be in God. But God said, this thing, this, this, this spiritual 
construct that I have developed has nothing to do with you. All you have to do is believe in what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Because if not, you're going to end up like the Jewish people were. That's what kept them from believing in Jesus. That's what the apostles' whole fight was about, was fighting against Jewish people who still trusted in their work. They still wanted to sacrifice. They still wanted to circumcise. They still wanted to try to keep the 613 laws. But Jesus lets us know through the Apostle Paul that the game has changed. I want everybody to do just like Abraham did. I want you to begin to walk by faith. I want you to begin to trust in the blood of the Lamb for the remission of your sin. I want you to begin, hallelujah, to trust in Jesus Christ again like never before. So let's go to Genesis. Hallelujah. We're going to go to Genesis tonight. Praise the Lord. And we want to begin to talk about, well, who is this man that the Apostle Paul is talking about in Romans? Who is he talking about in Romans chapter 4? Well, we're going to go to Genesis 12. We're going to go to Genesis 12, and we're going to rock, and we're going to drop it like it's hot. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Genesis 12, verse 12, deals with a man named Abram. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 12 that the Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. This point, and I, I may be, this may be the only point that I deal with tonight, is your blessing, your blessing is in unfamiliar territory. Your blessing is in unfamiliar territory. We have to develop an ear to hear the voice of God. Many people are praying and they're going through the religious motions, but they're not hearing. That is a problem. Because as we explained a few minutes ago, that we are now the temple that housed the presence of God. We house the Holy Spirit on the inside of this temple, and therefore God wants to speak with us. If you're not hearing, there's, there's a lack of faith and connection somewhere. And a lot of times what I've realized in my experience is that you must begin to quiet everything else down. You must begin to quiet down the television, maybe even uh, people in your family, people uh, that are your friends, you must begin to find quiet time with God because it is very imperative that if you're going to grow in this winner's faith with God, you must hear his voice. His voice must become very distinct in your life that even if you're walking down a crowded street in Manhattan, New York, in Times Square, that if God begins to speak to you, that you understand that is the voice of God. I love it in the book of Samuel that when Samuel was a young kid and he was first developing a prophetic hearing of God's voice, that the voice called him three times. He thought it was actually Eli, uh, the priest of the temple at that time that was calling him. And he went and checked with Eli three times. Eli said, son, the next time you hear that voice, that is the voice of the Lord. And I want you to begin to ask God, what is it that you're saying to me so that I can begin to move by faith in what you're trying to establish in my life? Understand that everybody on this line tonight has purpose with God. Everybody has a purpose. God did not create you without a purpose and a plan. 
everybody has a purpose. And when you connect to God through salvation, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he is ready to speak to you and download how he wants you to move. He did this with Abraham uh, as he was beginning to establish a bloodline that was going to be dedicated to exemplifying the presence of God. This bloodline that he wanted to, hallelujah, dedicate to him was going to come through the bloodline of Abraham. One thing that Abraham had to establish first, his very foundation, his very start of everything, is he had to hear God and he had to be obedient to what God was saying. Oftentimes, we're looking for God to bless us. We're asking God for blessing. But if you're not being blessed, you have to check whether God has really told you that was the way that he wanted you to move. That is part of the humbling process. I want to work this right here. That is part of you being humble is where you can begin to lay your ideas down before God and you can begin to speak with God. And if God says, this is not the way that I want you to move, you humble yourself, pick up your plans and you put them to the side because that is not the way that God wants you to move at all or maybe at this particular time. Oh, I wish, I hope somebody got a pen tonight because God wants to work through you, but he's going to do it according to his plan and purpose for your life. Some people are running away from the plans of God because they're still spinning wheels in their own ideas and plan which they feel is giving them more salvation. But this is not what God's construct is. He wants you to be established in faith and knowing that you are saved. He needs you to establish this so we can move to the next part of our relationship, which is you hearing the voice of God and beginning to step out on what God wants you to do. I'm talking to somebody tonight, hallelujah. Because some of you have been afraid to step out on what God is telling you to do. And it is causing you much frustration. It is causing you even to have uh, uh, anxieties and depressions and, and frustration in other parts of your life because of your fear to step out on what God is calling you to do. You will not be satisfied until you begin to step out into the purpose and plan that God has predestined for your life. Hallelujah. And most of the time, most of the time, when God begins to speak to you about a blessing, most of the time it is not in your current vicinity. Oh, I wish I had somebody right now. I wish I had somebody right now. Hallelujah. You want to raise on your current job and you keep being frustrated because the boss keep passing you by. The boss keep looking you over. Some of the young people are coming in and they're moving up the, the corporate line ahead of you and you become frustrated because you don't understand why they're passing you over. Nine times out of 10, because your raise is not in that particular company. I wish I had somebody. Hallelujah. God is calling you to an unfamiliar territory. Because it's unfamiliar, because it's unfamiliar, why is it unfamiliar? Why is this territory unfamiliar? It's unfamiliar because in order for you to get to the place that God has called you to, it's going to take faith. It don't look like it. It don't smell like it. But I've heard, hallelujah, I've heard the voice of the Lord. And because I've heard the voice of the Lord, I begin to do like Abraham and step out into the new place that God is calling me to. Even if that calls me leaving my native country, if it calls me leaving my relatives, if it calls me to leave my father's family, I will go where God has told me to go. My blessing is over there. 
Hallelujah. My joy is over there. My fulfillment of purpose is over there. Hallelujah. My blessing and my breakthrough is over there. It's in unfamiliar territory. It's in places that God has destined me to be. If your church is not growing, if the people don't have the drive of the vision that God has called you to, hallelujah, nine times out of ten, you're preaching to the wrong people. Oh, God, I wish I had a church up in here. Hallelujah. You're preaching to the wrong people because God has a people that are assigned to your ministry. Hallelujah. He has a people that are assigned to your life. They are assigned to your destiny. So preacher, there's no reason for you to get frustrated. You just need to get on your face and hear the direction of God your business. You wonder why your business ain't taking off. Hallelujah. Well, if you know that God has called you for your business, then maybe it's your branding. Maybe it's your advertising. Maybe it's the group that you are uh, trying to sell to. Maybe this is not the group of people. Maybe this is not the team that you need. You need to get down and hear the voice of God because he has put a purpose on the inside of you. Glory to God. And he's ready to manifest himself. But you've got to have the faith to step out into unfamiliar territory. You have to go there. You have to let go of what's familiar in your current life situation, and you got to go get it. That's what I love. And I may just have to end with that point tonight. Maybe I can get to another one. Hallelujah. But I'm excited because we got to develop this winner's faith. When, you go, when you're developing winning faith, you can't have a loser's mentality. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me here. You got to understand who is backing you. You have to understand who is in the temple. Glory to God. Who is in your body? Who you are representing? Who is empowering you? I have a power of Jesus Christ on the inside. That power is greater than any power that remains in this world. For the Bible says that greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Hallelujah. I come to tell you to go get it. Hallelujah. It might cause you to go out in the unfamiliar territory. You might have a little culture shock when you get there. Mm, glory to God. Hallelujah. You might be a country boy in a city. Hallelujah. You might be a city boy in the country. But if God told you to go, it's time for you to pack your bags. I wish I had somebody up in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says that Abraham picked up his whole family. He got all his family, he got his nephew Lot, and it was time to go to the place that God said that he would show him because he had understood the word of God. God said that I'm going to take you to a place and I'm going to make you famous when you get there. Hallelujah. This is about making God famous, but God said I'm going to also make you famous. Hallelujah. You're going to bring glory to my name, but I'm going to also bring some blessing to your name. Hallelujah. You got to get up from the place where you are at, and you've got to be ready to go and establish what God has called in your life. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abraham built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. This second point, write this down. When you get to this place, this unfamiliar territory, even though it seems like that you are empty right now, that you don't have what it takes to make this happen, God is going to anoint you, watch this, write this down, God is going to anoint you to build in a barren place. God is going to anoint you to build in a barren place. Glory to God. He's going to anoint you to build in a barren place. Notice what God says. I will give this land to your descendants. 
Abraham and Sarah, his wife, cannot have a baby. She is barren. At the time that Abraham leaves, he's about 75 years old. He's become too old. She's become too old to have a baby. Everything that God is telling Abraham in the spirit realm is not lining up with his life currently in the physical realm. Hallelujah. He's in a barren place. Anybody ever been in a barren place? You ever been in a place where you just didn't have no money? You didn't have no connections. I didn't have no network. I don't have, seems like I'm losing friends. Seems like I'm, I'm standing out here by myself. Seems like I don't have any, 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 any uh, uh, resources to get what God is calling me to. But this place may seem barren now, but I want to tell you that God has given you the anointing to build in a barren place. Y'all know what see on my high. You've got to believe that you can build in a barren place. Hallelujah. God has the anointing for you to build in a barren place. Hallelujah. I'm about to get, I hope y'all get this revelation right here. Because in this barren place, there's generational wealth connected to it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In this barren place where God has anointed you to build, there is generational wealth connected in a barren place. Hallelujah. Because that's how you're going to know that it took God to do it. Hallelujah. God isn't into you going out and making it however you want to make it. Hallelujah. He's got to get some glory out of this situation. Even though he's going to make your name famous, if God ain't going to get the glory, hallelujah, it is not going to end up being what you thought it was going to be. Oh, uh, can I say that again? If God is not going to get the glory out of your life and out of your blessing, it's not going to end up being what you thought it was going to be. Hallelujah. But if God has sent you to a barren place, if it seemed like that it was no way possible for it to come to pass, that it had to be God and God Almighty to do it, you can look forward to it being a humongous blessing. Hallelujah. God is going to bless you in a barren place. Hallelujah. You might seem like you're too old. You might feel like I'm too old to get to this place and do what God has called me to do. You may feel like you're too sick. Hallelujah. To get to the place that God has called you to get to. Hallelujah. You might feel like that you don't have enough money or that you're not anointed as you thought you were. Hallelujah, to get to the place that God has called you to. But baby, I tell you that if you get on your face and God makes you a promise and he directs you that this is where I want you to go, I come to tell you that God has given you the anointing to build in a barren place. Oh, let me hear, I just heard that was just downloaded. Everybody ain't going to understand it. Hallelujah. You're going to get some people around you that cannot see what God has spoken in your life. Hallelujah. You're going to get people that are trying to give you negative words and negative connotations and condescending statements that will tell you not to move on the word of God. But I love what God did to Abraham. He said, I'm moving you away from everybody that could speak a negative word into your life. Hatamando because I want you to get to a place because this place I've already destined for you to be is going to bless you and your descendants. Hallelujah. I've given you the anointing to build in a barren place. And in this place, there is generational wealth connected to it. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I'm telling somebody you need to have winner's faith. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that God is speaking in your life, God, if he spoke it, you need to be unwavering in, in listening to it, and you need to be unwavering in responding to it. Hallelujah. That if God has told you, hallelujah, I want to tell somebody you need to get on your face tonight. God is ready to download. He's ready. Hallelujah. He's ready for you. Hallelujah. To move to the next level. 
He said, stop looking at yourself. Hallelujah. I know you might be 60. I know you might be 70. I know you might be 80. He said, but if I have put the anointing in you, the world is waiting on the purpose that I've put down on the inside of your temple. Hallelujah. You can't receive this blessing with a poverty mindset and a ghetto mentality. You cannot have low expectations. What did we say last week? Hope is about expectation. You cannot have low hope, low faith in what God is saying to you. That Oh, I just heard that. It just downloaded. Oh, I heard you, God. The reason that some of you are not hearing is because if God told you, you don't have the hope to receive it and move forward in doing what he told you to do. So he's waiting. Sometimes you have to be developed. Sometimes you got to go through some things. Hey, my God. Sometimes you got to go through some things. Sometimes you got to cry a little bit. You got to let God take you through some situations to build up that faith. And when you get to the place that God wants you to be, he'll come knocking. Anybody hear that knock in the spirit? He'll come knocking. Hey, you. Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land I will show you. And the Bible says, then when he gives you that, if you have the faith that Abraham had, this faith that the Apostle Paul is even preaching about 2,000 years later, then you're going to receive tremendous results. God is ready to change your life. He's ready to bless you. He's waiting for you to develop winner's faith. Sister Taylor, you're on the line tonight. He's ready for you to go to the next level in your faith. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. This faith is getting ready to open up some doors in your life. I'm saying doors tonight. This faith, this winner's faith that the Apostle Paul is telling us that we must develop. Stop looking at your insecurities, your insecure self. Stop looking at what you did and whether or not you deserve what God is saying that you can have. Because it's God is saying, you're cleansed. You're, you're clean. The blood that my son shed, it never loses its power. That blood, that blood from the lamb that was slain, it's never going to lose its power. Anybody tonight that has sin problems, you can repent tonight. You can give your life to God tonight. You can confess your sins tonight. And guess what? You don't have to wait until tomorrow morning for your sins to be cleansed. You don't. And whoever told you that is a liar from the pit of hell connected to that mentality that you got to work for your salvation. That's a lie. I come to tell you as a man of God, that's a lie. You can't work for this. This is a gift from God that you receive by grace through your faith, through believing that this blood is strong enough to wash away my sin, that God is strong enough to wash away any transgression that I've ever committed in my life. And that I'm clean before him. And that he has a purpose. My life has purpose. My life has purpose. And my life has a plan. So tonight we're going to pray for you. 
We're going to pray for winner's faith. Sister Taylor, you on the line tonight? I don't know if she's muted. I don't know if she's here tonight. Hallelujah. She may have gotten disconnected. Hello, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She is here tonight. Thank God for her. Yes, I, I was uh, muted. I was muted. Hallelujah. Thank God for you tonight, Sister Tate. And so we're going to pray, Sister Tate, <clears throat> that this winner's faith is developed. I hear the Lord saying that you have faith, but, but, but you're hanging on by a thread. You're hanging on by a thread. You're hanging. Oh, I heard that. Some people are, have one hand on faith and another hand on works. And it's a battle. It's a battle between your faith and your works. But God wants you to have faith enough tonight to let go of the works and to grab hold of faith with both hands. He wants you to be fully committed to faith in Jesus Christ tonight. Hallelujah. And this is going to become a winner's faith in your life. Sister Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Begin to take us through a winner's faith prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in your hands. It's in Hallelujah. Your hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's in your hands, Sister Tate. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We yes, give Lord. you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify your name tonight, Lord. Yes, Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Because you're worthy to Hallelujah. be praised. We come down to our soul, my Lord. Yes, Lord. We are Hallelujah. here tonight because of you, Lord. Yes, because Jesus. of your shedded blood on Calvary, oh God, and because the gift that you put in us, we give you glory for. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Realize it's not by works, but by faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we're here tonight calling on your name because Hallelujah. you gave us the privilege to call. Yeah, come on, we thank you, oh God, tonight for your word that went forth concerning the winner's faith. We are winners. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Lord said we're winners. And the reason that we are winners, he come to mind because he came down through 42 generations Hallelujah. to make us women, to yes, save Lord. our souls and Bring us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Uh, Hallelujah. We don't have to be losers anymore. Uh, yeah, the Lord said we're winners in him. Uh, Hallelujah. Us, uh, uh, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and yes, are heavy Lord. laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, Hallelujah. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Oh, for God. my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Hallelujah. He come down of us. He hung down of us. Hallelujah. We saw how he spoke to Abraham. Hallelujah. Who is the father of faith? He come to us. He told him to leave his country and go to a place that he would show him. Yes, Glory Lord. to God tonight. The Lord want to show us what he want us to do. Hallelujah. Where he want us to go. Hallelujah, how you want to walk and talk and live for him. He'll show us the way all we got to do is have faith in God because hallelujah. Abraham is the father of faith. We got to follow, hallelujah. He come out of our side. Yes, got to follow Christ Thank Jesus you. and follow Thank his you. way. We'll be able to make it. We'll be on the Mercedes. Come to my mind. Yes, the Lord is speaking to somebody tonight. Yes, and let Thank you know, you. come to my seat. That you can make it by yes. faith, by faith. Yes. Abraham made it. Yes. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't see it. His wife was barren. But the Lord had spoken what he was going to do. How oh, he coming? He's going to be a father of faith. Hallelujah. He didn't have no children at the time. Hallelujah. But the Lord had a plan for Thank Abraham. You. Hallelujah. He's got a plan for you. Hallelujah. He's got a plan for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All you got to do, hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The faith in God. Hallelujah. Have faith in Whatever he says to you, do it. Come to my 
Not by faith and not by sight. This Hallelujah. is a faith woman. Glory to God. The Lord wants to use us in the vineyard for him. He wants to labor in the vineyard to win souls for him. The Bible says Hallelujah. the harvest soon is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into us. Oh, I'm so glory to God. Yes, There's a harvest of souls out there. People are sick out there. Yes, People are in prison out there. Men and women, hallelujah, on drugs and alcohol. Hallelujah. And sexual immorality. The Lord wants to deliver. The Lord wants to heal. Hallelujah. And he wants to set free. Yes, he and he's calling yes, his people in heart. Calling us to hallelujah. come to him. And we'll come, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. He said, take my yoke upon you, little bit. We want to do his will. Yes, Lord. We Hallelujah. We don't Hallelujah. Want to do it Hallelujah. No more. Come to my flesh got a way that it wants to do it. But yes, we can't Lord. do it our yes, way. We got to follow Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory yes, to God. We got yes, to go Jesus. his way. We ask him yes. to order our steps in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that he'll Lord, take Lord. us on his arms and use us. And yes, get the glory of our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. We're praying for sinners tonight. Hallelujah. Sinners on the line, we're praying that the Lord will bring you in. Yes, out Jesus. of darkness into the light of Him. He comes out of our step out of faith. Believe Him. Hallelujah. Receive Him. Hallelujah. And He'll make you what He wants Hallelujah. you to be. He made Abraham what He wants him to be. Come yes, about yes, He'll make Jesus. you what He wants you, you to be. He comes because we all got a purpose. Yeah, the Lord said we got a purpose in life. We got a purpose. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to use our purpose for Him. Hallelujah. We want to work for Him. We yes. want to be able to help others for Him. Hallelujah. That He'll get yes, the glory. Jesus. All the glory belongs Thank to God. Jesus. All the honor and the yes, praise Lord. belongs yes. to God. And when we work in the capacity that He has given us to work in Hallelujah. and labor and do the purpose that He has given us to do. Then he's gonna get all the glory. He come to him. He will come to him. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus came Hallelujah. and he gave his life. Thank After you. Adam sinned, nobody could pay that penalty for sin. It took Hallelujah. the blood. He come to him. I took the Hallelujah. blood of Jesus. Jesus. The blood Hallelujah. of lambs and bulls and bullocks couldn't do it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Jesus had to come Hallelujah. and sacrifice his life. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Wash yes, away Jesus. our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And since he has come and washed away our sins, all the glory goes to yeah, him. No, Whatever is yes, done. Hallelujah. 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 The glory goes to Jesus. When the sick is healed, Jesus gets the glory. When yes, souls are saved, Jesus. Jesus gets the glory. When he leads us out in the place he wants us to be, in all our steps, and we lay in the vineyard, he gets to the my God. Yes, all the glory belongs to God. Yeah, man, we thank the Lord for the word tonight. Thank you for looking on Ella Jamal. Look on him, oh God, and bless him and his wife and family. I keep coming and have your way in his life, oh God. Continue to use him for your glory, oh God. Hallelujah. Look on the sick on the line tonight. Look on the burden, yes. the bound, the bereaved on God yes, tonight. Lord. Look on the suitor, suicidal people. Hallelujah. Touch Hallelujah. the heart and touch the mind. Give yes, them yes. life. Give them peace life in you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody open your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Give you glory. Hallelujah. Give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister, thank you for that prayer tonight. I believe somebody's going to get a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Whatever Hallelujah. you believe in God for, if you believe in God for your children, if you believe in God for your health, if you believe in God for your finances, 
somebody's believing God for confidence and courage. They have a lot yes. of fear during this time. Uh, but the Lord doesn't want you here in a lot of fear. We must keep our focus on Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Keep your focus on the cross. I hear the Lord saying, he said, remind them of Elijah. He said, when Elijah was scared of the decree that Jezebel, Jezebel had him on the hit list. She had him on the death wish list. She had a murder. Uh, she wanted him to be murdered. God had to get Elijah to a place where he said, I'm not in the wind. I'm not in the fire. I'm not in the earthquake. He says, but I'm in this still small voice. God wants us to hear his voice again. Find your place of quiet time so you can begin to hear his voice. In your prayer, prayer is a conversation with God. Yes, it is yes. not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. It is yes, where yes. you talk and then you have to hush and listen to what the Lord wants to say to your life. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And he may wake you up. Mm, I'm going to give you a nugget right there. Sometimes to hear the voice of the Lord, he will disrupt your sleep. Yes, you don't learn yes. anything else about a prophetic word. Sometimes he will disrupt your sleep at your sleepiest time. It may be three o'clock. It may be four o'clock in the morning. Listen to the Holy Spirit talk to you and get up out of the bed and listen to what the Lord is saying. He wants to see how, do you want it? If you want it, let's be a winner. Let's go for it. I read an article one time, and I'm going to let you guys go. I read an article. Kobe Bryant used to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go practice. Now, if Kobe Bryant could go practice basketball, that means absolutely nothing on earth. Then you can get up at 3 o'clock and take this wonderful opportunity to talk to God. God has the answer, but he wants you to get to the place where you're ready to receive it. Does anybody need prayer this week? We want to pray for you. We want to put you on the prayer list. Anybody that needs prayer? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we certainly thank God for you tonight. Thank God for you tuning in. And let's get everybody, everybody that you, that you know, business leaders, people that have needs, let's get them on the call because I'm telling you, by the time we walk through this, Whoever has that mentality that they've just been holding back or standing in the background, we're developing winners. I'm a coach by nature. God, that's one of my gifts. He's blessed me to coach. And I come to coach you out of your unbelief place in God. I come to coach you out of that place where you feel like you're relying on yourself and that you don't have a lot of hope. I come to coach you into winner's faith. I come to coach you into being a winner. Hallelujah. God wants you to win. Hallelujah. When you leave this call tonight, I want you to look at yourself and I want you to tell yourself three times, God wants me to win. And I'm going to win. Hallelujah. I'm going to win. Thank you so much tonight. Thank you, Brother Tony Bullock, of course, for the engineering as always. Such a wonderful call. And we look forward to hearing from you on next week at 8.30 sharp. Beat me there. Beat me to this line. Beat me to this line. We have a word from God for you. So God bless each and everybody tonight. We look forward to talking with you next, next week. God bless you. We love you from the Filial family. Shalom, shalom. God bless. God bless. God bless.